Testing, one, two. Okay, good. We got levels. Okay. So give me the starters for Doherty Valley again. First of all. And they're 21 uh, and 12, by the way. For right here. Got a uh, Inish Pandy, number five. It's Inish? Inish, yeah. Inish Pandy, okay. And then um, yeah. Andrew Nelson, number 10. Okay. He had uh, 31 kills last game. Okay. And um, 16, Joshua O. Josh O, okay. 21, Alex Wilson. Okay. 33, Rohith. Rohith. Guntapali? Guntapali. Guntapali, like it. 34, John McPherson. Okay. And 44, Ashton Murphy. Goes by Ashton, yeah. Okay. Oh, they have Ashton on that. Okay. Good, yeah. yeah, they had they had it, uh, Patrick on here. Okay. Anyways, oh, like, then go. we want to change it because I've got uh, in the overlays because I got it as Patrick. Okay, I see what you're saying. So Patrick would be right, right there. Change that to Ashton. All right. Like that. Perfect. And then we may take hide overlay off because we haven't submitted anything yet. And that's right there. Okay, good. Um, all right, and it's Chris Lamb, Gurneev, Serene. Um, Chris and Lamb was their libero, broke his hand. They're like He's their, out. He was their, one of their studs. Chris Lamb, okay. Gurneev, Serene, is that how you pronounce it? Gurneev, Gurneev Serene, yeah. Inish Pandy, Wayne Lee, Chris McMahon, Andrew Nelson, Josh Shillox, Wilson, Rom. Rom. Vi Di Anathan. Vi Di Anathan. Vi Di Anathan. Right. Vi Di Anathan. John Aiello. Like Aiello. 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 Okay. And, and uh, Rohit. Rohit, yeah, we got that. Double E. All right, and then starters for Camp Alindo. Uh, we got a uh, seven, Ryan First. Okay. Number one, Joe Worsley. Okay. Number 15, Griffin Bell. Okay. Number 31, Stefan Bull. Bull. Like, bull. Yeah, like the animal. Bull, like a bull. Yeah. In a china shop, bull in a china <laughs> shop. Okay. Uh, number six, William Hendrickson. Okay, I don't have Hendrickson as six. I don't even have Hendrickson on here. Oh, I have his three. My bad. He's wearing six tonight. That's, uh, well, no, this is this is what they have. Oh, so, we so should, it is three. Okay. We should go by this. All right, so we're going to have to make some changes there then. All right. So first is wearing seven. First is wearing seven. Yeah. Worsley's one. All right, so it's Henriksen. We got to change to number three there. And he's... Okay, um, so I got I Worsley first, too. Bell, Bull, Henriksen. And Stevenson, number Stevenson. nine. Okay, and it's Ryan Alva, Chad Cook, Michael uh, Standring. Correct. Avery Stevenson, Jack Eisner, Alex Vigil, Luke Hoyle, Brian Lee. The head coach is John Vong. The head coach is Dave Chen. Oh, all right, we'll change that. I put HC so people would know. Head right. Coach. And did you? Um, Ray Montalvo. Okay, great. Yep. All right. Yeah, both both of the coaches they had. Well, for that it was the assistant for the other. Hey Robert, do you think you could put up the banner, maybe behind us with the tape? Okay. I can help you if we need it. All right. They're starting uh, two freshmen, two sophomore, two seniors. Who Camp is Campolindo? Camp Campolindo. That's pretty amazing. All right, well, we're ready. Why don't you go ahead and put the scoreboard up, but we don't. We won't start yet. Now, remember, you you'll count me 
It's team locator. Sorry, team locator. My bad. Okay. Team locator. That's yeah, the entry good. point. So you'll hit go on air and then mark in. Remember mark in, um, and then and then point at me. I'll stay quiet right. until right. then. And then come on. Are they doing a national anthem? Do you know? You want to run down and check while we hang this banner up? Oh, hey, I've got my, uh, On Campolindo, there's a uh, Stevenson's, they're twins. Okay. Here, make sure you can hear me, and I'm not too loud or buzzy. Well, actually, through this, because uh, we want to see how we sound there. So just drop one in. Just from time to time, just check in on it, because you'll have time. Sorry, there's so many chords around here. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. How does that sound? Is it buzzing or anything like that, or is, how does, it, does it sound okay? Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. Check, 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 check. Jeff Kurtz here on. A little low? Okay. Turn us up. That's okay. It's not coming out over the air. This happened last week. It's not coming out over the air. Yeah. <laughs> Because I tested it, because I can, I can watch. <laughs> I'm watching the game on my phone, and it was fine. So we're okay. I know, it is a little trippy. All right. But it sounds okay. Okay. Great. Fine. Then we won't even worry about it. I cleaned my ears too today, so. All right. That's full of wax. Okay. All right, so you up for doing double duty here? Oh, yeah. All right. Best you can. Don't sweat it. Oh, shoot. Ain't nothing I can ha can't handle. So Camp Alindo's going in black, and Doherty Valley is going in black. Thanks that for making it easy awesome, for us. That is awesome, guys. I appreciate that. And not only are they black, but they're like navy blue on black. Oh, these guys, Do yeah. Doherty Valley? I'm Yes. Only because Camp Alindo is doing the other. All right, they got a minute for you to warm up. You want to start? Sure. Robert, Robert, where are you? Hold on, let's hear Robert now. Hey, Robert. We're going to start rolling. So you can hit record and then just put it on the warm-ups. So, so during pregame, we're going on air, marking in. Am I putting this up? Yep. Okay, and then cool. when we go to a break, go to video sources. Right, right, right. 
and, and then break. break and hit play. play. So you can highlight break right now. Okay, but I don't, see. Once you hit and play, it'll over. be a minute, so don't freak out if gotcha. it takes a second. But, and then we'll take it off of that. You just hit stop and we're. Okay, yeah, right now we'll, I'll go on air, mark in, then stop. Or we're not stopping anything. Go ahead, right go now. the overlay for now. Yeah, we aren't hitting it yet. Okay. You'll go to that after they go to the national anthem. I'll okay. wrap up my point. Okay. okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. We're yeah. stopping that. So we're here at Team Loader. Okay, so you can go ahead and hit submit now. And this is how we'll come on. Gotcha. So you can hit go on air and uh, mark in, and I, like I will that. take it like away. That. But know that we're, once you hit go on air, people can hear us. Good evening and welcome to CIFNorthCoast.tv's live coverage of the Boys Division II Volleyball Championships. We are at the cozy confines of Camp Alindo High School. Jeff Kurtz alongside Bo Fertig as the Doherty Valley Wildcats, the number four seed in the or the number four seed in the Division II tournament, gets set to take on the number two seed Camp Alindo Cougars in what should be an outstanding matchup. Bo, as we look to the game here today. Doherty Valley, what a road to get here. They were down two games to none to the number one seed, Sir Francis Drake High School in the semifinals. Stormed back one in five, three games to two. Campolindo also had to go to five against Akalani's to make it to this game. Talking to the head coach, Ray Montavo, before the game for the Wildcats. In his 26 years of coaching, his top game of his coaching career, he said it was the absolute best feeling after the game, one, because it was a semifinal game, and two, because it was a great comeback win. They were down throughout the whole game, and for a team to be down and come back in that type of nature shows a lot about his team. Yeah, Doherty Valley, they're actually in their first North Coast section championship in any sport. Correct. In a young, uh, a young history of the school, uh, and been in, in uh, I guess, in service, for lack of a better term, for less than a decade. Meanwhile, Camp Alindo, a long, rich tradition, their football team made the state championship this year, won a section title in the North Coast section. They hadn't done that in more than two decades. Now their boys' volleyball team has a chance to add a North Coast section title to the gym here. And this gym is, as you've got a lot of banners hanging up in the Camp Alindo Cougars gym, let me tell you. Yeah, talking to fifth-year head coach Dave Chen before the game, he talked about their prowess and just the ability of this team to play well in big games, thus all the great banners set sitting around us right now. But he said it's been a tough road for his team in the playoffs because one, teams have gotten better, and two, it almost seems like teams have put a mark on their back, meaning this is the team to beat because of their just great national just nobility throughout the season. Yeah, and in the North Coast section in particular, this is a very good team. Their girls volleyball program here at Camp Alindo has also had a lot of success, has actually appeared at the state level. There's no state tournament for boys volleyball, though there is a southern regional final, which is actually taking place tomorrow in the southern half of the state. Boys volleyball just begin to take off in the northern half of the state, actually all playing in the same time. Some, some sections were playing it in the fall, others in the spring. Now it seems like most sections in the spring and it's starting to expand their, uh, their volleyball divisions. But the South has been dominant, no state tournament. This is it for these Division II teams right here today. And they know each other very well, both from the De Oblo Foothill League and Campolindo undefeated in league play. They have yet to go to five sets with the team in league play. So that just shows their dominance this year. Yeah, they played Doherty Valley twice this year, beat them 3-0 and then 3-1. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game here from Camp Alindo High School as we get ready for the Division II championship game. You saw the records up on your screen a moment ago. Doherty Valley walks in with a record of 21 and 12. Camp Alindo, 27 and 7. First, let's start with the visiting Doherty Valley Wildcats. Inesh Pandy gets the start tonight wearing number five, one of the outside hitters for Doherty Valley, who will be joined by Andrew Nelson, who had 31 kills in their last game against Akalani, or excuse me, against Drake, Josh O, Alex Wilson, Rohith Guntapali, John McPherson, Ashton Murphy round out the lineup as the libero in this one, Josh O, will step in. That's why I said seven. For those who are suddenly wondering, did Doherty Valley add a player on the court? No. The libero is going to be rotating in. Doherty Valley is going to be playing seven players tonight. Their head coach again, Ray Montalvo. Meanwhile, for Camp Alindo, Joe Worsley, Will Hendrickson, Ryan First, Griffin Bell, 
Ethan Stevenson, Stephen Bull, and again, the head coach, Dave Chen. Bo is talking to Doherty Valley before the game tonight. What did the coaching staff say to you in terms of how they beat a Campolindo squad who has taken six game, six of seven games for, against them in two league games this year? It, it's, it's been a, a tough road for them as well. They, they've really had a, a young squad. Both, both sides have young squads, but it's been one of those things about their attacks, attacking style on offense that has really gotten it going for them here in, in this playoffs. And we'll see if that attacking style can match up against Camp Alindo here today. Both teams, folks, as you can, you'll can, you see in just a moment, wearing black, which is not going to help too much, folks, except to tell you that Camp Alindo has got the white lettering and Doherty Valley in a test for colorblindness a little bit here, folks. We'll see how well we can identify them during the course of the game. A navy blue on black. That does not make it any easier as we are calling the game today. But we will do our best for you folks as the player is being introduced right now. What a great atmosphere and a, a fantastic gym to hold a Division II championship game. It's an intimate location here at Camp Alindo High School. You can see it on your screen across the way with the fans from Camp Alindo, the student section filling in a little bit here to our right. And you can tell that Given the size of the gym, it is going to get noisy in here, even if we don't have a capacity crowd. Well, whenever you have two teams in the same league, they know each other very well. And not only do they know each other, but the fans know each other as well. So it is a collaborative effort to get together and root both teams on because they know this is their rival. And whenever you could beat your rival in a championship game, it is that much more sweet, Jeff. It certainly is. Meanwhile, Camp Alindo is going to try to hold court here. A lot of sections have a neutral site location for their boys' volleyball championships. The Central Coast section down in San Jose did that at Independence High School. The Sac Joaquin section did that over in the Sacramento area at Monterey Trail High School. In the North Coast section, however, the higher seed gets the home court. How does that play to Camp Alindo's advantage here tonight? I don't know if it does because it's so even right now. That, I mean, it, these... As far as proximity goes, both of these teams are, are close in proximity, so it's not a big travel, and they both have about the same amount of fans on both sides as well. So when you get to this point, it's, it's really about which players play best. And when you talk about 31 kills from Andrew Nelson, it takes an effort like that to win games like this. Camp Alindo starts two freshmen, two sophomores, and two seniors. Head coach Dave Chen is a nice blend of underclassmen with senior leadership right. out on the floor. It's been, a, it's been a great learning experience for these young underclassmen. And they've been winning, not only winning, but convincingly. And it's been recently that they've had a more difficult time in these games. They're starting to battle a lot more uh, longer sets. And we'll see how that kind of plays out because when you get to a team, that doesn't necessarily play long sets and they get, it's like a Mike Tyson mm. back in the days, you know, long, quick fighter, quick punches, but can't last long. And I don't know if that's the same for this Campolino team, but you put them in a position that they don't feel comfortable in and things tend to happen your way. You talked to Coach Chen before the game started today, or before the game uh, as the teams were warming up. What did he say about their semifinal win? They took a two games to none lead in that one against Akalani's, lost the next two games, managed to squeak it out in game five. Did he give you any indication as to how that worked out for his teams in terms of how they prepared for today's game? A little bit of fatigue, and it seemed like his team just lost their concentration along the way. They got up two sets and almost got a little too comfortable. And they realized, Okay, now we're in game five. We actually need to play now and got it going. <laughs> Put their foot back on the gas pedal. Right, huh? exactly. And at, at any level of sports, you, you see a team who has dominated throughout the year kind of lay low when they do have the lead. So it's a learning experience. It's definitely a learning experience. And I'm sure Coach Chen talked to his boys before the game and said, we need to play from game one to whenever the stop, the clock stops for the most part. Well, folks, we're gonna take our final break here on CIF North Coast TV before we get underway with game one here in the boys' Division II championship game. Stay tuned in just a moment. 3.16 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run us to the five, 10, touchdown! Wolverines! 
How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot. Kept a Back at Campolindo High School, getting ready for the Division II championship game. Boys volleyball, Doherty Valley, Valley will be to your left-hand side. Campolindo will be to your right. I'm Jeff Kurtz alongside Bo Furtig. Robert Fields providing all the video for you this evening. We also have lacrosse going on on CIFNorthCoast.tv. The girls' Division I championship game taking place right now. The boys taking place beginning at 8 o'clock. Invite you to tune into that one after we're done here. Not only are we live on CIFNorthCoast.tv, we are also live on the Play On High School Sports Network on YouTube. It's YouTube.com slash Play On Network. So if you want to check us out mobily, you can do that as well on YouTube. Or if your phone happens to have Adobe and Flash, you are good to go. <laughs> Players take the floor. There's always so much anticipation in a game like this, whether it is a, a championship game of badminton or a championship game of football in front of a crowd of 25,000. The kids get amped up, and they are ready to go in this one. Our officials also get amped up for games like this. Dante Segura is going to be our lead official. He is in the chair on the far side of the floor. Our down official, David Ma, he is number two, closest to the scorer's table to the near side. And then our lines people, Samuel Stewart to the left. And to the right, Renato Alfonso. Keys to the game. Bo, it seems like that Campolindo's got to establish something early here on their home floor. Doherty Valdez is going to try to suck a little bit out of the balloon if they can. Yeah, and if you're looking around, defense, defense. You see that a lot throughout this stadium. And because of it, it it's the defensive strategy of this team. Coach Chen said we are going to win this game based off of our defense. And they really do play as a team. They said they don't have a go-to guy because if that go-to guy fails, he fails the whole team. So he really likes the just the ability of a great team battle and a great team win. Josh O going to serve first for Doherty Valley, and we are underway. Campolindo first on the attack, going far side. This one's going to be kept alive by the Wildcats. Now near side on the attack, tap over. There's the defense, backside defense both teams as we have a back row attack, playable. Doherty Valley unable to keep it alive, however, and it is 1-0 Campolindo on the side out. One thing Coach Montavo talked about was his aggressive style on defense, more of a college style. They really do attack the net, and because of it, a lot of points come on that back line, just exact, just like you saw right there on that first point. Avery Stevenson now set to serve for Campolendo. One nothing, Cougars. And a service error, and we're tied to one. And one thing Coach Chen talked about was getting his players' feet wet in the game. It seems like his team in the playoffs have had a tough going and have run to some tough spots throughout. Oh, great feed in the middle, but a little bit too long on that kill by Stephen Bull. 
And so Andrew Wilson, the hero in the semifinal game against Drake High School, serving again. And Doherty Valley has their first lead of the game. Bull just unable to get on top of the ball, has to drive that ball down. Here's a set near side, and beating a one-on-one -on -one block handily was Ryan First, who gets his first kill and ties it at two. And by the looks of that, if you don't get more than one set of hands in front of his face, it's going to be hard to stop that kid. Yeah, John McPherson went up on the near side one-on-one, -on -one, and that was just a great bit of setting by Joe Worsley to set up that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the near side. Doherty Valley. McPherson's going to tap it over. Nice job. Campolindo keeps it alive. And a free ball over in three for the Wildcats. Here they come. Near side McPherson. Good D. Campolindo on the soft off speed and battle at the net. Good rally here, Bo. Campolindo going outside and beating the block. Will Hendrickson. A good job by McPherson on that last one. Unable to get the point, but he kept the ball alive near the net. Campolino takes the early 3-2 lead. Serving is the libero Brian Lee. Clean serve. Turn pass outside. Nice double block. And you see the advantage right there, Bo. Double block versus a solo block. Doherty Valley's been only able to get one pair of hands up. Campolino gets two there and gets the point. They read that so well. Hendrickson on that far side along with his teammate first. Great job on defense. And this one, nice job Doherty Valley keeping it alive at the net. 50-50 ball, won by Campolindo, but Doherty Valley an opportunity. McPherson along the tape, Campolindo is there and gets another point. And the home crowd likes it here at Campolindo High School. 5-2 Cougars. Three unanswered points for Campolindo. Doherty Valley cannot get down in this first game by too much. Lee on the serve. Backside McPherson beats the double block. Great set on that particular play. I believe that was Inesh Pandey who got that set to the near side. McPherson, the block couldn't get over, the middle couldn't get over quickly enough for Campolindo. And this one's set a little too close to the net. We got a lift call, good call, and it's 5-4. Campolindo by one. A great job by Doherty Valley coming back, quieting this home crowd. Yeah, boy, if Campolindo had gotten up 7-2, I would have really fired up the home folks. Instead, it's 5-4. Nice dig back in one, but Doherty Valley can't quite control. Good effort on the play by O. But he couldn't quite make the play. Campolindo, as well as head coach Dave Chen, knows that Doherty Valley likes to attack the net, so they're really gonna try to attack the back line of their defense of the Wildcats. Now serving is Ethan Stevenson. And he's dug, going back around the attack. Nelson, boy, nice dig by Lee there, the libero for Campolindo. And this one's gonna go wide off the hand of Avery Stevenson. Ethan and Avery, same last name, same year in school. Share a house? Yes, folks, they're twins. 6-5, <laughs> Campolindo. And a service error by Doherty Valley, and they turn the ball right back over, and that is something you can't afford to do on the road. One-to-one -one on service errors for both teams. It, it's tough. It, it's tough when you're playing against a quality opponent and making mental errors like that. Ryan first with the serve for Campolindo. Doug. O goes middle. Nice tap over McPherson. Lee flying into your frame makes the dig. Back row attack. Back in one, Doherty Valley, good D by McPherson. Here's a kill, long. Or no, we got a touch. Touch is the call. Doherty Valley thinks they still got the point. But no, good call by our officiating crew as they were correct in that it was out, but it was touched by Doherty Valley along the way, 8-5 Cougars. First serve, Doug. Far side tap over, defense is there for Doherty Valley. Back row, Nelson, and he gets the point. You can see why this kid is such a weapon. From the back row, he attacks and gets a great kill to the back far corner of the, of the court. And, and, and great positioning on that hit. Goes in between two defenders away from the libero. Pass middle, oh, great put away. 
Griffin Bell gets the point. 9-6 Cougars in game one. The game started at 2-2, then Campolindo went three unanswered, and then it's been back and forth ever since. Campolindo with the slight edge. Chad Cook in to serve for the Cougars, up off the bench for the first time in the game. Jump float serve over, dug nicely by Rohith Guntapali, and Doherty Valley transitions that into a point. It all starts with defense, and Guntapali a nice feed into the middle for a quick conventional bump set spike. I mean, that's like, that's old school right there, old school volleyball. And old school cross court kill, beautifully played. Campolindo now on the attack, blocked, blocked at the net, Nelson. Gets the hand on it and makes it a one point game. McPherson the serve, Lee the dig. Pass middle, nice dig, Doherty Valley back in one. Attack again, nice tap over, great read by Bull. Who gets the point this time and Campolindo extends their lead 10-8. On Bull's last kill attempt, he went up a little too strong and almost did a counter act of that. Went up, saw that the defense was drawing back and dumped it right in front of them. Joe Worsley now to serve, one of four freshmen on the team and one of two freshman starters. So playing well above his age right now in this varsity game. And has been doing so all season. Back row, Doherty Valley blocked a second time at the net. Far side, blocked a third time at the net. Over and two by the Wildcats. Can Campolino close this one out? They do! What defense! And Stephen Bull puts a stamp on the 11th point of the game for the Cougars. Yeah, that point, a lot of the times points are created from the offense. This time, all through their defense. Three blocks, you can't say much more than that. I don't think I've seen that all year in boys volleyball. Three blocks at the net on one point. Here's a slide, and that's a great offensive play right there by Doherty Valley as Alex Wilson will get that point. Shift it up offensively and get the side out. 11 to nine, our score, Campolindo continues to lead. Doherty Valley has led once in game one. They were up two one. Otherwise it has been all Cougars. Serve is, oh, and a service error. 12-9 the score. And now set to serve Michael Standring for Campolindo. Standring just waiting a go ahead from Dante Segura, our lead official, and gets the go ahead to serve. It's up and over. Doherty Valley goes near side. Nice dig defensively. Worsley off the Nelson kill, and then hit in the far back corner. Will Henriksen. He couldn't have done any better, Bo, if he'd walked around to the other side of the net and dropped the ball right in that spot. Henderson has that mentality kill. And there was nobody in that back corner. Great vision on that cross court kill. Standring still at the service line. Pass far side, McPherson blocked again. And then a tap over. Campolindo is dug over in three. Free opportunity for the Cougars. They're gonna go set backside. Great set blocked one on one by Nelson. Another kill, good defense. Both teams right here. Nelson goes up, beats the block, still playable. Outside, far side, first taps into the donut hole in the middle of the defense, and Campolindo's got 14 points. And a timeout is gonna be called. Timeout called by Doherty Valley. Campolindo leading here in game one, 14 to nine. You're following the action on CIFNorthCoast.tv and YouTube.com slash PlayOnNetwork. You can watch a replay or highlights of today's game in our on-demand section. And you could also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on our CIFNorthCoast.tv. Click on Buy DVD and you could order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by, by CIFNorthCoast.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFNorthCoast.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. 
For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Once again, that number is 619-677-3246. Folks, happy you're joining us here today, wherever you're following the action from around the world. As we come out of the Doherty Valley timeout, the Wildcats trailing 14 to nine, standering with the serve for Campolindo. Pass middle, and a little bit wide. Great effort, but the kill, no good from Alex Wilson, and it's 15 to nine, and Campolindo's starting to stretch that lead out here, Bo, in game one. Great job by the libero from Campolindo in letting that ball go on the near side. Great recognition by Brian Lee. Here's a one-handed set, tough to do at the net. Nice job by O here near side, going with two hands and getting the point. Worsley, the freshman, great passer, gets the ball to Henriksen, who gets another point for the Cougars. And what great potential for this young freshman. The ball, bad set, but goes back, and great players know how to make good things happen off of tough sets. Perfect example right there. Standering just to switch things up. Serve from the far side. Here's another block. Boy, the defense for the Cougars right now is so tough. And in front of that, that freshman, number three, he has been a handful. I'm sorry, he's a senior. Yes. I don't know why I'm That's, calling he's him gra He's graduating yeah. if he hasn't already. <laughs> he doesn't want to go back four years, I can assure you. <laughs> Standering serving again. That kid's spending a lot of time at the service line. This one's going to be put away by Ryan First. That's the freshman you were looking for right yeah. there. And his last two kills were off of soft attempts. This time he drives it down into the chest of his opponent. Standring a float serve over. Nice serve, kept alive. Doherty Valley back in three. Standring up in the air, Worsley goes backside and another kill for First, freshman to freshman. That floating serve by Standring really set it up for that offense, the defense of Doherty Valley just complacent on that one. Timeout once again by Doherty Valley. They are now out of timeouts. So Doherty Valley done with the timeouts, Bo. That puts them in a bit of a tough spot, but they're trying to stop the bleeding here as Ray Montalvo sees his team down 19 to nine. It was a close game, it was 11 to nine. Then Michael Standring goes to the service line. They're gonna rename that Standring's line because he's been there long enough. I think I see a tent down there. I see some cookware. He's really set up shop. Well, what he's doing, he's finding the weaknesses in the Wildcats defense right now. Just like on that last serve, he found a hole and because of it, players were hitting the floor. Whenever multiple players hit the floor, that allows that much more space for attacking. And when you have the attacking mindset of this Campolindo team, they sure do take advantage of that. Yeah, Standring leaving the ball a little bit short is forcing defenders from the back row to fly up and make a play, and then they're out of position right. when they try to scramble back into a defensive mode after they attack. Let's see if that timeout slows Standring down at all. It does not clean serve. O is gonna try to set up far side to McPherson. Off the block playable, Lee is there. Worsley, back side. Here's first again, he's gonna send it long. And the point to Doherty Valley, a badly needed one, and they need to get on a run right here, trailing by nine. They stopped the bleeding, but they're gonna need someone this game to make a couple big plays to get back in this one. Andrew Nelson's serve is over. Worsley goes middle first tap. McPherson keeps it alive. Back row, O to Nelson is dug by Worsley. He's playing great. Henriksen off the block playable. O goes backside, this is McPherson blocked at the net, and another big play by Campolindo's front line. It's tough for this Wildcat team because it almost gets into your mind a little bit after a team blocks you so many times. It's gonna be tough to overcome. That time it was Bull, a sophomore, and first a freshman who made that play. 20 to 10, Campolindo. Nelson from the back row. Dug by Lee, off the ceiling, and that's where home court advantage is not so great <laughs> when your ceiling is low. Nice play by Lee, but once it got redirected by the lights up above, the point to Doherty Valley. 20 to 11, our score. Hendrickson taps over in three. McPherson's gonna set back row Nelson, and he beats the triple block as Campolindo is saying, Nelson's not gonna beat us on that one. We're gonna throw everything at it but the kitchen sink. Far side, this one too close, or too far away from the net. On the attack by Pandy, and the point to Campolindo, they're up 21-11. Yeah, if you're gonna beat this front line 
of Campolindo, you're going to need a much better set than that. You, it's tough to get that, and when an opposing defense sees a set like that, they know exactly what's coming, and they can set up for it. Ryan Alva rotates in the front row with first and Griffin Bell. Lee still in the ball game. Now serving is Ethan Stevenson. Standring also stays in. Quick substitution for Doherty Valley. We'll get that for you in just a minute. Rohith Gutapali is going to dig this first one here. Oh, bump set McPherson near side off the block. Lee, who's been everywhere, gets a dig. Pass near side first. Playable for Doherty Valley. McPherson again, and this time he beats the block. Campbell into a little bit out of position, and Doherty Valley gets their 12 point. Yeah, back and forth rallying. Good job on both sides. Even better attack at the end to finish. McPherson now serves deep. Lee up in the air. Now new setter Stevenson's going to give it to the middle to Griffin Bell. Wow. Make no mistake, Bell was going to get that point. And I love that set near the front of the net in the middle because it allows both sides to attack. Much tougher on the defense to react. First serve is Doug. Pass far side, blocked at the net again. That has been a familiar refrain here in game one. Blocked at the net, Doherty Valley, that's at least six clean blocks. And Campolindo is up by, by 11, 23 to 12. And once again, that set taken a little uh, farther away from the net than wanted, allowing the defense to get their hands up to block it down. First with the serve, here's Nelson from the back. Do we have a touch? Boy, I look like there might be, but the point, yep, is going to go to Doherty Valley. I didn't see the touch called initially, but then I think our chair official got that. Dante Segura, nice job by our officiating crew so far here in game one. Doherty Valley trailing by 10. Far side, Nelson beats a triple block. That is not an easy feat. Especially given how well Campolindo's been blocking in game one. That's a player that's going to get it going for this Wildcat team. Oh, but an unfortunate service error. And it is game point for Campolindo in game one. They're up 24 to 14. They got a lot of game points to work with, Bo. Out of timeout, Doherty Valley. And now serving Chad Cook, trying to close it out, the senior. Floats the serve. Dug by Gutapali in one. Here's Stevenson, backside, and beating the block is Ryan Alba, and that concludes game one. 25-14, Campolindo in game one. They take it, teams will switch sides. We will get you ready for game number two. We are live at Campolindo High School here on CIFNorthCoast.tv. And happy to be providing you today's broadcast, folks. But we are not done after today's action. We've got lacrosse later on this evening. Girls Division One taking place right now over at Dublin High School. Boys Division One set to go at 8 o'clock. Then tomorrow we've got more lacrosse. Boys and Girls Division Two. Those games are at noon and 2 at Marin Catholic High School. You can watch them all on CIF North Coast TV and YouTube.com slash Play On Network. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program. Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again. That's info at kbcsports.com or call us at that number, 619-677-3246. Once again, 619-677-3246. Jeff Kurtz alongside Bo Furtig. Bo, it was a tight game until the 11-9 mark. Then Michael Standring goes to serve. And eight points later, his team's up 19-9, and it was all Campolindo from there. Yeah, I'm looking at one banner in particular, Defend, Define. And that's what <laughs> that Campolindo team, that game one was defined by their defense. 
they just simply took over. Defense creating the offense, and whenever that can happen, it boasts well for this Campolino young squad. Well, I'll, I'll highlight two elements to that. One, the play at the net. I have never seen so many blocks result in points in any type of championship game or, or playoff game in all my years of covering boys volleyball around the state of California. That was an impressive performance by Campolindo. At least six blocks that we counted, resulting in points for the Cougars. And then on top of that, the play of Brian Lee in the back row as the libero for Campolindo, outstanding. He dug a lot of tough balls that were coming from not only Andrew Nelson, but John McPherson, a few others for Doherty Valley. And Lee handled them very, very well. You talk about defend, define, that is the definition of what Campolindo did in game one. And you said it a few times in that game one, great recognition. And, uh, and allowing a couple of those closer balls to go out of bounds. Well, we are going to switch sides to begin game two. And as often happens in volleyball, the fans switching sides as well. So the entire student body moved from the right to the left, which is where Campolindo is now on the floor. And Campolindo will get the serve. Doherty Valley to the right-hand side. The parents, I noticed, did not swap. <laughs> they were a little bit more comfortable in their seat location. Ah, the benefits of youth. You're more inclined <laughs> to stand up and switch sides. Getting ready to serve the freshman, Joe Worsley. Talk about youth. Youth was served. This kid has been playing very well, setting for Campolindo in game one. And this time on the serve, we've got a double on Josh O, who had the ball slip through his hands. And so Campolindo jumps out in front here quickly in game 2-1-0. We saw a couple unforced errors by Doherty Valley in that game one, which kind of got it going for Campolindo. We'll see how that unforced air looks down the road in game two. Yeah, Doherty Valley cannot afford to do that against the Campolindo team that's now taken Ooh. seven of eight from them in now three different matches. Will Henriksen, replace your divots. There's a dent in the floor here at Campolindo High School after that kill. That was dirty and he felt that one from the tips of his toes to the tips of his fingers, putting that one down for a kill. Doherty Valley trying to get something going, a triple block. There's another block by the Cougars, unbelievable. Free ball coming over here. Campbell into an opportunity. Lee, Worsley, far side, tap deep. Nelson, nice job getting there. And then over in three, Doherty Valley. Another chance, pass middle. Great feed to Stephen Bull, and Campbell into is feeling it. Dare I say they're elevating their game. And not just literally by how high they're jumping on some of these kills, but metaphorically with how they're playing. Into the net on that kill by Nelson. And it's 4-0 Campolindo here in game two. Worsley, another jump serve. Nelson digs. This is good to Pauly over in three. Doherty Valley hasn't had a good offensive run yet. On the attack, Hendrickson, a kill. Coach Montalvo may have to call an early timeout here. He's trailing 5-0. Yeah, one reason is because Campolindo's not giving them an opportunity. They're taking the most out of the advantage right now from their attacking style. Wayne Lee is going to replace Alex Wilson in the front row for the Wildcats. And these are all points that occurred after that unforced air to start game two. Another block, but this one's going to go out. Inesh Pandey will get the point for Doherty Valley. They're on the board. And they need to get a run going at the service line. Pandey dug by Lee. Worsley bumps it outside Hendrickson. Dug by Gunta Pauly. Pass near side going up. Nelson, that is your offense right there for the Wildcats. And Samuel Stewart, our linesman far side, Bo, called that in with a flourish. You see him <laughs> wave that flag after he pointed that one in? I love a volleyball linesman with a little bit of style. Pandy set to serve again, his team trailing 5-2. Now we've got a quick conversation at, between Alex Nelson, the, or excuse me, Andrew Nelson, one of the captains for this Doherty Valley team, and like, our, our official Dante Segura. I don't know if it's a question of were players talking to each other or what maybe was going it's more on. Of a, excuse me, can you tell these guys to stop blocking my kills because I'm trying <laughs> to get going here. <laughs> They're messing up my game. My girl's in the stands. I'm trying to look good for her. 
as we all Are you do saying Camp Alindo is not being a gracious host right now <laughs> for Doherty Valley? To say the least, Camp Alindo defense has been stifling all game up to this point. Doherty Valley had one lead in game one, and that was the first point of the game. After that. Yeah, it was two to one in game one for Doherty Valley. And then since okay, then, yeah, two, one. it was That's early. Right. But then since then, nothing. Meanwhile, the conversation continues at the score at the uh, our chair official. And I think it's a function of the student section. I'm not sure. The communication, uh, Avery Stevenson, one of the seniors for Camp Alindo, who was at the chair with Dante Segura, just told one of the administrators who's sitting in the student section over there for Camp Alindo, told her something. She then turned around and communicated to the rooting section. Now we've got another student on the far side acting as a little bit of a leader and talking to some of his, I'm assuming, classmates about how they should be cheering. What One thing Doherty Valley got out of this was a timeout. Yeah. I don't know how much that helps them, though. They've just gotten two points in a row. You wonder how long that delay hurts Pandy, who's at the service line. He sends a deep ball. Stevenson up in the air. Worsley's going to bump set back row first off the net playable. Doherty Valley looking to cut this to a two-point advantage, and they're not going to do it. Pandy left it short. So mostly, I guess it was a function of uh, being a good citizen in your cheering, I guess, is uh, and your rooting, but for your team, I guess that was the conversation that was taking place. Six to two, Camp Alindo. They lead it. They're already up one game to none. McPherson blocked, playable, nice job. Worsley over in three. Good to Pauly, to O, near side. Nelson blocked, but out. Pandy is going to give it to Good to Pauly for the serve. Libero with an opportunity for Doherty Valley. Nice top spin over first digs. Worsley, near side. Henriksen. I don't think he's missed yet, has he? I was just going to say, if Doherty Valley plans on getting back in this game, they're going to need to slow down Hendrickson. He's just doing anything at will right now. Well, there's not been a very coordinated block defensively on the part of Doherty Valley in this match. Near side, Nelson taps over the left hand. Let's see, we got one on one, a solo block. So that's tough anytime defensively. This one's off the ceiling, playable, but we're going to get the point to Doherty Valley. Actually, not playable. Campbellindo got it up in the air, but they used it to ricochet it off the ceiling out of the Doherty Valley. That, that would have been exciting. That would have been. Only in your Memorial Day picnic <laughs> game can you do that. This one blocked. There's a coordinated block attempt, and the double is there. Nelson and Ashton Murphy and Doherty Valley with the point. Nelson is the heart and soul of this squad. If they're going to get back in this game, it's going to be from the hands and head of Nelson. Worsley back row. Oh, good job, McPherson, timing that one to keep it alive. Nelson! <laughs> that had some fire on it right there. I'll tell you what, Samuel Stewart, our <laughs> linesman over there, he gets into his kills, man. He points those things in. He went behind the back with a flag <laughs> after that play. I love it. Everyone getting into it here at Camp Alindo High School. Nelson with a dig off the attack. Back row, Pandy Long. Nice job, though, by the Wildcats right. on that rotation. Right. Getting the ball back in, getting the game back in. They trail by just two. Yeah, manageable from this point right now in game two. Now serving Ethan Stevenson. Stevenson. Jump, float, serve over, Green to Pauly digs. Oh, middle, McPherson dug by Lee, who's been everywhere. Here is a tap over first. Near the net, O oh, keeps it alive. Nelson blocked at the net. No, it hit the tape. That's four on Doherty Valley. This was a score in game one, 9-6. And it went 11-9. And from that point, Campolino took over in game one. Stevenson this time moves to the far side of the service line. Gunta Pauly with a dig. O near side, Nelson against the double block, and he is roofed. Ryan Alva and Griffin Bell put the finishing touches on that block for the Cougars. When you play against a quality team, 
you're going to need to do it from more than one side of the court. And Campolindo is keying on Doherty Valley right now. Well, good idea going middle right there. Right. Ashton Murphy, just Josh O needed to change that up a little bit because everywhere that Andrew Nelson goes, two Campbell and, yeah, two and sometimes three. 10 to seven to score. Stevenson, far side, off the block, playable. Bumped over in three by Pandy. Here's Stevenson going middle and a little bit long. Off the hand of Griffin Bell, he wanted a net, uh, or he wanted a touch, but he's not gonna get it. And it's a 10-8 ball game, Doherty Valley now, Andrew Nelson set to serve. Lee Stevenson goes middle. Oh, there's a block by Doherty Valley. That's their second. Ashton Murphy, <laughs> can't believe it. He may not have had a, as good a block all year as he just had right there, and it's a one-point game, and Campolendo is going to use their first timeout. 10-9 to nine our score. Cougars lead it here in game two. They're up one game to none in this boys' Division II championship game brought to you live by Play On Sports, the Play On Network, and CIFNorthCoast.tv. If you're a baseball fan, we'll have baseball coming your way next Saturday, June 2nd as we head over to Oakland to bring you four games from the home of the A's, the Oakland Coliseum. The North Coast section finals will take place on the same diamond where A's greats have made their mark over the years. And now this year's class of high school athletes will have the opportunity to do the same. Join us on CIF North Coast TV beginning at 10 a.m. next Saturday, June 2nd. This is on your home for North Coast section sports. We are CIFNorthCoast.tv as Andrew Nelson set to serve out of the Campolindo timeout. Lee up in the air. Stevenson, far side. Alva off the block, playable. Boy, Doherty Valley's really tuned up the defensive block here in game two. And Nelson from the back row is tied at a 10. We talked about it, Bo. Doherty Valley needed to get back in the game. They weren't coordinating their block attempts. Since that point, they've done it three times and it has improved their offense. Alva's gonna tap over, McPherson is there. Near side, Pandy blocked, keeps it alive, back in one. McPherson back in one again, good to Pauly, nice D. Doherty Valley over in three, and no, we've got a double on Murphy. Camp Alindo back in front. Doherty Valley has not had a lead in this game and they've had one lead over the two games that have been played. Two to one, that was a short lived lead in game one. Nelson back row, long. Well this is about where Camp Alindo took over last time. 11 to nine right, last time, right. now 11 to 10, they're up 12 10. First at the service line, clean, Pandy to O. Middle Murphy barely gets it over. Nice dig by Campolindo. Back row, oh, first and Bell. First was coming from the back row. Bell was in the front, miscommunication, <laughs> and the point to Doherty Valley. Almost looked like a slam dunk contest. One player trying to come over the top, trying to bring it down, just unable to do it, taken out from under. Are you saying first just postered his own teammate? <laughs> Not quite, but almost. First the dig off the serve. Outside, Stevenson beats the block. That was Avery Stevenson with a point. 13-11 Cougars. Still very manageable, Jeff, right now in game two. Half, about halfway through this game, but we're gonna need it from someone else other than Nelson for the Wildcats to win this game two. Alec Vigil just checked into the game for Campolino and just got the serve away. Oh, good block at the net, Ryan Alva. Boy, defense has been so critical, net play in particular. Usually you think it's off the attack, maybe the back row, but no. It's been the front that has done an outstanding job for both teams, in particular Camp Alindo, over two games. Here's a deep ball as Nelson couldn't quite get a solid swing on it. That's Nelson's second miss hit of the game. Maybe a little fatigue. We'll see, he's been doing a lot of the work on offense in this game too, Jeff. Vigil continues to serve, his team is up four. 
Here's on the slide at the net, and it goes over as Alex Wilson couldn't recover to make a defensive play. And this is what great teams do like Camplin, though they take advantage, they smell blood and attack. And they're running away with it right now in game two. Vigil set to serve again. Vigil deep ball up in the air. Pass near side, Pandy off the block playable. Stevenson keeps it alive. Wow. Campolino barely over in two. Back row Nelson, over a triple block. Nice D in the back row by Vigil. Good rally here. Well, I'll tell you what, we just sat back and let you enjoy a little rally, folks, and that was fantastic. Nelson with a put away, and it's a 16-12 game. I'll and tell you what, Alec Vigil came off the bench right now and provided some quality points for head coach Dave Chen. And that's what he needs, teamwork. Like he said, there's no individual player that's gonna do it for this team. It's gonna be a collective win. That is a service error, Josh O commits the error and now Joe Worsley to the service line where he started out game two. We've had one full rotation for Camp Alindo. They're up 17-12. Guntapalli over and one. Opportunity for the Cougars to go up six. Here's Hendrickson who's been automatic. Timeout. Called by Doherty Valley, their first. They trail 18 to 12 here in game two. You're following the action on CIF North Coast TV. KBCSports.com and Play On Sports Network showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest KBC news and Play On news on Twitter, or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com and Play On Sports. That's right, folks. Invite you, in, invite you to like our Facebook page. KBC Sports provides you all the information you need within California. Play On Network gives you nationwide information, so invite you to like both and become a fan. Set to serve Worsley. Out of the Doherty Valley timeout. Serve is good. This is O outside to Pandy. Off the block. Good effort by first. Couldn't get there. And the point to the Wildcats. Good timeout right there. Came out and got a point. Let's see if they could keep it going here in game two. Down five. I'll tell you what. Will Hendrickson has been such a weapon for Camp Alindo. If I'm Worsley, I'm looking to feed him right here. There's Hendrickson, and another point. You just saw that one coming, didn't you, Jeff? Couldn't keep your mouth shut, could you? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna nickname that kid ATM. <laughs> Every time you put your car in the ATM, you get money right. out. Every time you feed <laughs> Hendrickson the ball, you get a point. I like that analogy. I hope That'll it sticks work. beyond his senior year, 19 to 13. Doherty Valley back row over in three. Lee, Worsley, he's going middle, wow. Stephen Bull makes it 20 to 13. They saw a little bull in him right there after oh, that yes. kill. Here's Standring who had a good run in game one. Eight consecutive points from the service line. He was there a while. And he starts out with a point there to make it 21 to 13. Standring, his team up by eight. Oh, a service error. Unfortunate for Camp Alindo. Doherty Valley with life, 21 to 14 our score. In game one, it was standing with that nice consecutive set score. This time gives it back to Doherty Valley. Good to Pauly with the serve. Here's a pet. Hendrickson. There it is again. Worsley went to the bank and got a 20 from Hendrickson on that one. 
And the great thing about that was he was near side, near the net, and curls back in the middle, yeah. which makes it so difficult on the defense to track. Their That's a tough play to execute, too. You send one right. guy to the net for a kill, he's faking it, and then you got someone coming the back side. The defenders go up to block the first one, and they're coming down when the guy goes, oh, there's Hendrickson again. I mean, are we even surprised at this point? No, now he's charging you for a convenience <laughs> fee. <laughs> 225 for oh, convenience fee. So. It, it hurts me every time. It's hurting Doherty Valley even worse, though. 23 to 14 the score. Campolino fans got to like it when Hendrickson is in the front row rotation. That ball is in for the Wildcats, 23 to 15. Our linesman, Samuel Stewart, nice call. Did the Texas two-step to make that and avoid the ball at the same time. Still went behind the back with a flag after the play. McPherson serving, nice dig by Lee, far side. This is first going up, down the line a little wide. Well, if you're Doherty Valley, you gotta get on a run right here. You gotta close it. You gotta get six straight from this point to get yourself back in the game. Pass, middle tap over, that was Bell. Near side, Nelson, who's been quiet recently, off the block, playable. Worsley, back row. Nice job standing, but a good dig defensively. Hendrickson. Oh my gosh, Hendrickson didn't get it automatically. Nice tap, Worsley heads up play. 24-16 and it is game point but for Hen the Cougars. Hendrickson in a sense created that point because of the big hit, gave the one tap back over and their offense was set perfectly. Here's the serve from Ethan Stevenson. Trying to close out game two. Nice block at the net by Ryan First. And defense wins game two for Campolindo. 25-16. They are a mere game away from the Division II championship here in the North Coast section. You are following the action live on CIFNorthCoast.tv and on the Play On High School Sports Network, youtube.com slash playonnetwork. And folks, you can buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game. If you're following the action on cifnorthcoast.tv, click the link in the description immediately below your screen where you're watching the video. And you can order a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game. We will send it to you with a play-by-play -play as we called it live here from Camp Alindo High School. Also stay tuned for the CIFNorthCoast.tv post-game show following the conclusion of the match and the award ceremony down on the floor. We'll have an interview with our player of the game from the winning team. But before Campolindo fans start okay. celebrating, they're in they this are position before. That's right, two games to none. This is a familiar location for Campolindo. They were here in the semifinal against Akalani's and then bing, bang, boom, they were tied at two and forced into a game five. What is Coach Chen communicating to his team? out there in the huddle right now. Stay poised, play within ourselves. Defense, defense, defense. And right now, Dorn Valley is almost playing against themselves right now. A couple unforced errors, and they're really capitalizing on that right now. So play within ourselves, make the other team make the mistakes. And that's where they're really coming out on top. How big is it, do you think, now that almost Coach Chen may be thinking to himself, hey, it's a good thing we had that going on in the semifinals. Because guys, we were here two days ago in this exact same spot and you relaxed, right. thinking you'd already won. You win at three games, not two games. I mean, do you think that's a lesson that has been learned by the Cougars? Well, you would hope so. And from young players at the high school level, it sometimes takes a couple games. <laughs> Just you never know. <laughs> and, but when you're in a situation like this, primetime players playing primetime games, and it's going to be quite an effort for this Doherty Valley team to come back. We've said Nelson a few times, but Capilindo just uh, collapses on him way too much. So it's going to be a team play for Doherty Valley to get back in this. They were down two sets or two games in the semifinals to come back. And Coach Montavo said it was the best game of his career. If they come back and do the same thing, yeah. this will be the best game in his career. Valid point. Doherty Valley, Doherty Valley was here against the number one seed, Drake, two days ago. So it's not nervous time necessarily for Doherty Valley because one thing, great thing about volleyball is you play the game before, but now we're at 0-0. Zero, zero. 
and you aren't going to tie this up in right. one game. And, so, and you said that almost perfectly. One game at a time at this right now at this yeah. point. You know, it's cliched. I mean, you hear right. people say that all the time. Athletes say that all the time. But in this instance, you can't make it go any faster if you're Doherty Valley. You've got to play this one and get to 25 before Camp Alindo, and then give yourself an opportunity for a game four. Doherty Valley will get the serve. They are now to our left-hand side. Camp Alindo to our right. Both teams wearing black jerseys. Camp Alindo with the white lettering. Doherty Valley with the blue. Worsley hustling all the way to the near side. Lee over in three. O is there. Nelson back over in three. Here is a pass. Henriksen uncontested, but good defense by Gunta Pauli. But we got a double on Josh O. And the point goes to Campolindo. They're up 1 0. Campolindo got their first point in game two off of a forced air, unforced air, exactly like that. Just trying to tip it back over, set up the defense, just unable to do it. Campolindo has now played nine games against Doherty Valley over the course of this season. They have won eight of them. They're up 2 0 here. Oh, far side McPherson off the double block playable. First is there. Backside Henriksen. Kept alive by Doherty Valley. Good concentration by Pandy. Back row this time. Standring Doug. Pandy blocked out. Good defense by the Wildcats. They needed that spark here early. Henriksen has been automatic every single time, and they've just handled him defensively on two consecutive points. Doherty Valley has played from behind pretty much the whole night, so they'd like to get a lead here early in game three. First, not going to let him. At least not on that play, two to one. And that's what great teams do. When teams start coming back, they buckle down even more. And we've seen that multiple times from this Campolido team throughout three games. Bell replaces Bull in the front line for Campolindo. Here's O, he's gonna bump set. It's gonna hit the ceiling. Good to Pauly over in three. Worsley, nice job. Oh, reading his fellow setter and recovers nicely and gets the point. Worsley has used that dump several times, but this time Oh was there and he beats his counterpart and gets the point for the Wildcats. They've tied it at two. And right as they call it in that donut hole, good job on defense and hitting the floor, bringing it up for the point. Worsley outside Henriksen. And ATM does it again. Three to two. The length of Henriksen really provides the ability to get up high and drive the ball hard. And because of it, it's given this Doherty Valley defense fits. Well, Just, I'll tell you what, because Campolindo has so many places they can attack from, the defense doesn't know where to thing. go to set up the block. Very true. And Henriksen's been benefiting from that. Outside Nelson, blocked but out, we're tied at three. And it's the very, it's the total opposite story for the Wildcats. That's right, because Nelson has been the primary offensive threat. A little bit of McPherson mixed in, but Nelson is the go-to guy for the Wildcats. Lee's gonna set near side, wow. Ryan Alva, make your mark. That was impressive there by Alva, four to three. First serve over. That was a tough one. Guta Pauli didn't quite have his feet set defensively on that serve receive. And Campolindo's up two. But Doherty Valley cannot afford to let the Cougars get too far out in front in game three. Float serve dug by Pandy. Outside, this is Nelson. Nice play by Lee. Alva again. Great strength by Owl right there in reaching back and still putting enough force on the ball to beat the defender at the net. And again, a one-on-one -on -one block. You're going to win that more times than not if you're on the offensive attack. But that was especially difficult. Alva, you said it, Bo, had to reach back. Nice play at the net by Doherty Valley. You can see they set up their double block on that play. Set up the double there, but beating it. Campolindo, and they're up 7-3. And Coach Montalvo is going to call timeout for the Wildcats. He senses it here. His team is going back and forth, but that is 
Four consecutive points for Camp Alindo, and they lead it already up two games to none. You're following the action on CIFNorthCoast.tv. Need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact KBCSports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. It's that easy. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at that number, 619-677-3246. And one more time, 677-3246. In the 619 area code. Folks, we've got other games going on on CIFNorthCoast.tv. Invite you to stay tuned after this one and follow the action as the conclusion of the uh, boys' Division I lacrosse championships taking place at Dublin High School. They are getting underway right now, so you should have at least second half action by the time we're done here. Nelson. Well, we got in on one side of the court and out on the other, but the call is going to go Campolindo's way. They're giving the call to your man on the far side, Stewart. Oh, Sam Stewart, my new favorite <laughs> linesman. First to serve. His team up 8-3 and make it 9-3. And the wheels starting to fall off the apple cart here a little bit for Doherty Valley. Especially out of that timeout, too. They had the right play going to Nelson on the previous point. But just a little bit wide. And that one there, tough defense. And there's another play. And Two what, aces for first. Whatever wind was in their cell just totally dispersed after Nelson missed that kill far side. Now 10 to three. Here's the serve first. Back outside, Nelson over the triple block. Does oh, Lee wow. bring it back? All the way, wow! Nelson again. Oh, not twice in a row. What great defense by Campolindo and a nice job by Nelson closing out that point. And this crowd knows good effort when they see it as they all rise to their feet. I think that's our first standing ovation and Campolindo doesn't even get the point on the play. <laughs> 10 to four. Some good hustle right there, both teams. And there's a point in the middle for Alba. Alva's been a difference maker in game three. And now Alec Vigil checks back in. He was an interesting substitution in game two. Came up off the bench, didn't play in game one, but had four points at the service line, some good defense and attack from the back row. And looking to replicate that here in game three. Outside Pandy beats the block. First is there off the ceiling, playable. First over in three. Here's O middle McMahon blocked at the net. Bull and Avery Stevenson. 12-4 Cougars. Vigil to serve, ace. <laughs> Vigil was so fired up after that, I thought it was gonna be like a European soccer cup game or something, he's gonna just take the jersey off, swing it around a few times and put it back on. It was like he scored a goal. And the total opposite story on the other side. Frustration setting in for these Wildcats. Pandy blocked at the net, 14 to four. Campolindo 11 away from the win. All momentum on the side of the Cougars right now. And Coach Montalvo trying to save that timeout. It's gonna put in Rom Vidayanathan. Slow the tempo up a little bit. Vida and off and in. That's right, just slow things down without having to burn your final timeout. Vigil serve, good. Oh, outside, Pandy. Beats the block, 14 to five. Don't know if it was just a function of that slowdown in play or just a good attack by Doherty Valley, but they need to cut into this right here. They need to get this to about 14-8, 14-9. McPherson to serve. Out. That's not going to get it done. 15 to 5. Mm -hmm. 
Now serving is Joe Worsley. Freshman serve is good. Barely kept alive by Doherty Valley. Deep ball, nice kill by Nelson. 15 to six is our score. Jeff Kurtz alongside Bo Fertig. Robert Fields providing you all the video. We are at Camp Alindo High School in Moraga, California. Beautiful day in the Bay Area. And some good volleyball going on right now for the Camp Alindo Cougars up two games to none. Here's Henriksen back in the game. Dug by Nelson in the back. Outside Pandy far side. Pass middle and a kill for Bull. The sophomore makes it a 16 to six game in favor of the Cougars. Coach Chen of the Cougars is gonna have a great team for the next couple years down the road. What great team effort by this Cougar squad today. I thought Henriksen was Tebowing there for a moment. He was just tying his shoe. And there's an ace. But why shouldn't he be? He's up 17 to six right now, he and the Cougars. And everything is going there right Everything is going their way right now. Substitution by the Wildcats. They're gonna bring in Wayne Lee to replace Ashton Murphy. Michael Standring back to serve. In a 17-6 game. Far side, McPherson gets the kill. 17-7. So McPherson is a player we mentioned a few times in the first couple games, but never really got it going for Doherty Valley. Served by Pandy. Oh man, Bull, nice adjustment in midair, wow. but he, and a net touch against Doherty Valley. Bull was thinking he was getting something higher. I don't know how he made that adjustment, <laughs> but Michael Jordan is jealous, wow. <laughs> Great vertical on that. Great hang time to keep his body controlled and to tip the ball over the net. That was one of the more impressive plays we've seen. 18 to seven, Brian Lee, great athletic move. Here is O, backside, McPherson deep ball, dug by Standring nicely, near side on the attack. That was Chad Cook, over in three, Doherty Valley. A free opportunity here, Henriksen. Nice job by Will Henriksen, it's 19 to seven. The force from Henderson's hit, even if they do touch it, it bounces off so violently. I know, it's an act of courage just to get in front of that ball. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. No. That's for sure. I'd make sure I had a healthy life insurance <laughs> policy before I did something like that. 19 to seven, Camp Alindo up two games to nine, six points away from a D2 title. Lee continues his serve. This is Nelson, far side, triple block. Lee is there. Oh, nice job, back over in one. Good recognition by John Aiello, who's just checked in for Doherty Valley. Once again, another great strike by Nelson, but the defense, f bodies flying all over the floor. You almost need two great set kills to beat this defense. Rom Vidayanathan back in, and now he's serving for Doherty Valley, gets it over. Worsley, backside, Hendrickson, good idea. And that's gonna go out. That's the second time the balls came back after a block and landed out of bounds. Well, ATM is gonna head to the bench and well-deserved applause from the Camp Alindo Cougar crowd. It might be his last rotation as a senior. 20 to eight, the Cougars in good shape right now. What a way to go out if they do end up pulling this one out, Jeff. Serving Ethan Stevenson. Stevenson, float over Doug. Pass, Nelson, Lee is there. Off the top, no, and it's gonna be out. Nice kill by Andrew Nelson, 20 to nine. McPherson's gotta get hot at the service line for the Wildcats. That's not gonna do it, 21 to nine. Serving is Chad Cook. Cook, a senior. Serve is clean. Pass, tap, one-on-one -on -one at the net. Doherty Valley, another chance. Here's Nelson, triple block. Good D. 
over in three. Do they go to Nelson again? No, this time back row Pandy. Lee keeps it alive. Cook can't get there. Good hustle. 21 to 10. And Andrew Nelson set to serve. Nelson's going to be coming back next year for the Wildcats. He is a junior, and he is a, a force to be reckoned with. And going to see if he can get his team back in the game. No, two service errors in a row by the Wildcats. And when you know your best player is serving errors, it's not the best thing for your team. Bell is out. Bull is out. Freshman Jack Eisner is going to get his first playing time. He's in the front row. And Alec Vigil, the senior, back to serve. Vigil, three points away from closing it out for the Cougars. Pass. Oh, down the line. Ashton Murphy, great kill. Renato Alfonso, I think, I don't even know if he even saw that ball go in really, but he was pointing in as he ducked away from it. 22 to 11. And now Murphy to serve. That's a clean serve this time. And it's an ace, as a matter of fact. 22 to 12. Sometimes you need easy points like that. Substitution into the ball game. John Aiello is going to replace by Dianathan. Murphy's serve again. Good. Pass near side going up and getting the point. Avery Stevenson. 23 to 12. And Ryan Alva is going to check in. He's going to replace Luke Hoyle, who was in for just a minute. And Alva is going to go to the service line. Alva, a senior. That serve is long. 23 13. But this is it right here for Doherty Valley. You cannot afford a side out. And they are 10 points down. And it is on Joshua O. Oh. And a timeout is going to be called by Campolindo. They're going to talk about it right here. They are two points away, up two games to nine. You're following the boys' Division II uh, Volleyball Championships from the North Coast section right here on CIF, northcoast.tv. Make sure you stay tuned for the CIF northcoast.tv postgame show where we will have our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this game. That's coming up following the game on CIF northcoast.tv. That's right, folks. After the award ceremony, we're going to see if we can drag a player from the victorious team up here for a post-game interview. So stay tuned at the conclusion of the game here on CIF northcoast.tv, part of the play on High School Sports Network. You can also follow the game live on youtube.com slash playonnetwork. And now Doherty Valley, because why leave any timeouts on the table? is going to use one right here as well. So we will continue our conversation. Folks, for those of you who are new to CIFNorthCoast.tv, this is a, an effort that's part of Play On High School, the Play On High School Sports Network. We're happy you're joining us here today. We've got lacrosse championships going on today and tomorrow as well. Baseball next Saturday. And then we'll be back in the fall, folks, with football during the regular season, football championships, other sports as well. We are really your home for North Coast Section Athletics, CIFNorthCoast.tv. So I invite you to join us for today, tomorrow, next week, and next year. <laughs> we have got a lot of high school athletics coming your way. Crowd on their feet here at 23 to 13. Josh O set to serve. I appreciate some of the parents making a little bit of a window here for us so we can see the action. O serve is clean, in the air, deep ball, and over in three for Campolindo. And we'll let the players dictate the action right here. McPherson with the kill. 23-14. O needs to stay hot right here. O serve, a service error. And it is championship point for Campolindo, and they've got 10 of them to work with. And who is going to come in to serve? Well, Hendrickson is going to get to close this one out on the floor. Going into the front row, he's going to replace fellow senior Ethan Stevenson, who will be serving. It 
it's going to be Avery Stevenson. 24-14, Avery Stevenson set to serve. Championship point for Campolindo. Oh, the jump serve. Over in three, deep ball. Worsley, going to go to Hendrickson. Kept alive by Doherty Valley. Barely, yes, just over the net. Worsley to Hendrickson again for the closeout. And the Campolindo Cougars have done it. Twenty-five fourteen, twenty-five sixteen, twenty-five fourteen. The Campolindo Cougars are your boys' Division II champion in the North Coast section in boys volleyball. And of course, Bo Furtig, Will Hendrickson makes the final <laughs> deposit. But of course, congratulations to both squads. Doherty Valley, this is the first time in school history, their young school history, that they have, they have had a varsity team make a section championship game. And that is a credit to Coach Montalvo, his staff, and the kids for the Doherty Valley Wildcats. But boy, Camp Alindo, Got it done tonight. Three games to none over Doherty Valley. They took nine of 10 games over the course of three matches in this season from the Doherty Valley Wildcats. The Wildcats to definitely keep their heads held high, reaching it to this point. Only two teams get to make it to this point. They were one of two, but Campolindo, as far as teamwork, they were just far superior than the Wildcats. They had much more going defensively and because of it, really took advantage of some of the unforced errors of the Wildcats and the great play from a couple Campolindo players, including Hendrickson, uh, what was the uh, was the reason Campolindo came out with this one-sided victory? Well, and a great home crowd as well, and they really did play an advantage. I, yeah, I, I didn't think they would play. That much of an advantage, one, I didn't really sure what side was which as far as the fans go. But <laughs> when they when they got on their runs, the fans really got behind them and the players really fed off those runs because of the energy that the crowd gave them. Well, folks, we're going to step away for just a moment. Bo and I are going to determine yeah. who our player of the game is. Though I've got my vote in mind. <laughs> I'm sure you do as well, Bo, and probably folks, you watching at home. So... We'll see if what you're thinking is what we're thinking. In just a few moments, we will be back with the CIF North Coast TV post game show. Again, your final score from Camp Alindo High School. Three games to none. Camp Alindo over Doherty Valley. Back with more in just a few moments. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing. Incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs. And Jordan Lertik will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick error wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these 
fans. <laughs> You know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way, as he's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines and he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap play action to Campbell looks down the field now here comes the pressure he's going to be hit he breaks the tackle rolls left now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown for him. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame, and can probably in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rodabaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun, has time to throw, and he will fire, and he has a mad diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch by he laid himself wow. out there, and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely to Lewis and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outstretch of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. He might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney who makes a catch. Stiff arms the defender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying later to go play. for it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up, receiver far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. Give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Uwaba. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? 
It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga, was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by by one of the Falcons, and then Maliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the, presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab unbelievable catch and the ball at the 29 yard line of the Eagles and you can see the defense they're still bewildered how did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? even with two defenders around him and four big that's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well January oh. with the one hand jam he was not going to be denied there coming over with Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're not. They're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap, and they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one. But it does not matter. They don't get the point off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner. 62-6, to the final score. They are your D6 Titleist this year here in 2000. Five seconds left, clock winding down. Poway has won the title. 56 to nothing over the Vista Panthers. The championship goes to Poway. Well, your double wing T option offense down by five. They're going to have to spread it out. They go with three receivers to the near side. That's the short side. One solo left. Back to throw. McHugh. McHugh under pressure. Rolls out of it. Now he's dumped and dropped. And that's the last thing they could handle. And that's not what they could do. Bellerman now can't stop the clock. Fourth. Three, and that is going to do it. Santa Margarita coming back from the dead has won the Division I State Bowl Championship 42 37 in an improbable comeback against Bellarmine of San Jose. And the Bellarmine players on the field, on their knees, just absolutely dejected after playing just a just a gut-wrenching football game. About how he's going to throw the football on this play. And <laughs> Westlake might have been daring him to do so. Just joking, though, folks. Peros is going to take a knee. He does. That's going to wrap it up. Well, I'll tell you what. Westlake had an outstanding year. They win the Southern Section title. Never easy. They went 14-0 coming in. They're going to finish 14-1. and And there is no shame in losing to the De La Salle Spartans. De La Salle wins at 35-0. KBCSports.com postgame show. Coming. Nino Holmes to serve. Needs a, a good one. Serve is over. Back in one. Off Panthers. Here's the chance. Peterson outside. Kuntz up in the air. Holmes brings it back. What a save. Free opportunity for the Wolves. Peterson to Brown on the slide. There it is. What a game. Lots of emotions. The Shasta. Point is in. Back here on CIFNorthCoast.tv, I'm joined by our player of the game, a very happy senior to my right, Will Henriksen, the player of the game here in the Boys Division II Championship game. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It must be huge for you guys. It is. And talk about what it means to this senior class to come away with a championship here today in front of the home crowd. Well, I think a lot of people in this position always talk about how much they've worked this season. But I think for us, it's really been four years of dedication, coming to practice on time every day, working our butts off. It, it's really, it, re it really means a lot to us winning right now. And it completely validates what we did last year, too. Yeah, you know, it's satisfaction, it yes. seems, is what's the emotion yeah. over there with you. As I mean, elation and everything else. But is that accurate? Uh, uh, accurate description? Yeah, completely. We've worked so hard for this. And knowing that we deserve it and coming out and snatching it it really means a lot to us talk about the dedicate you say dedication the hard work the practice 
But what does that look like in reality? Because you hear people use those words to describe what it took to get here. But what does that mean? Is that 5 a.m. practices? Is that what does that look like in reality? I think that uh, I think that looks like in, in practice when you when you're you're there for two and a half hours every day, day after day after day. You might not even have a game for two weeks. It's really coming out with this with that intensity and trying your hardest in practice because you know that's going to carry over into your games. And I think that's something that we really showed. You know, the senior class made a huge contribution. You talk about four years of dedication. But boy, you've got some freshmen and sophomores yeah. who are new to the yeah. whole culture of this thing. Joe Worsley in particular, what a great distributor. Talk about the difference that these underclassmen made and how you guys as a senior class were able to bring them along so they make such a huge contribution. You know, we're, we're really lucky, lucky to have all these freshmen and sophomores. I mean, last year we lost uh, seven seniors. Most of them were starters. So having guys like this that know how to play really well, are willing to come out here every day and show all that dedication, it's really, it's really a huge boon for us. What was the difference in this game in your mind? You guys played really well at the net, it seemed like us defensively with a block. But in, in your mind, walking in, what was the key to the game, and did you guys fulfill on that? Well, I think... What really uh, really led to that is we've been preparing for this all season long. Dave just did a great job preparing us for the mental pressure of being in the finals every day. He was doing something to make us, to try and screw us up. So we would be <laughs> able to, yeah, he'd, he'd, put, he'd make us wear earplugs. We'd have sheets on the net so we couldn't see. I really think that uh, that really helped us with all the stress and pressure of being in the That's finals. That's like Jedi training right there or something he was doing <laughs> yeah, with you guys. Almost. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, we gave you a nickname during the course of the game, ATM, because every time they fed you the ball, you were putting it away. It was automatic every single time. <laughs> Do you really look at yourself as that, like, we're, I'm the rally killer for the opponent. We're going to, every time they feed me, we're getting points. No, I don't think so. I think what separates us for a lot, a lot of teams like, you know, Akalani's and Drake or even uh, or even Doherty Valley have a lot of great players that they have a guy that's just really good at volleyball and they go to him. But I think what separates us and really put us in the lead is we have such a great supporting staff, all sorts of players, middles, outsides, setters, le great libero. I think that's what really helped us in the end. It's your senior year. When's graduation? Uh, two, next week and the week after, and then Two graduation. weeks, two yeah. weeks, okay. So you're two weeks away. Yeah. Is there any better icing on the cake for your senior year with graduation around the corner than a, another section title in boys division two? No. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys gonna celebrate this win? Um, all this hard work and dedication party. all year, you must have had something in mind. I think we're probably going to go go back to one of our houses and watch this game about three or four times. All right, I think well, that's what we're going to do. And you can, folks, in about 15 minutes on CIFNorthCoast.tv. We'll have the game up live on our website in just a few minutes. Our player of the game, Will Henriksen, satisfied, elated. He is our player of the game here tonight in the Campo Lindo's three games to none win over Doherty Valley. Will, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Us. We'll be back wrapping up here on the CIFNorthCoast.tv postgame show in just a few moments. Please stay with us. Back here on CIFNorthCoast.tv as we wrap it up from Camp Alindo High School. Jeff Kurtz rejoined by Bo Fertig. Bo, we just heard our player of the game, Will Hendrickson, saying he wants to watch this one again and again and again. And you can with the magic of the internet. <laughs> How about that? How convenient. On CIFNorthCoast.tv and uh, YouTube.com slash PlayOnNetwork. We will have the game for you in just a few moments after this one concludes. So a great way for you to watch it again and again. But what a performance by Camp Alindo here tonight in front of the home crowd. Yeah, a great team effort. And Coach Chen, that's one thing he emphasized 
before the game. We don't really have that go-to guy. You know, sometimes players, like I said, play big in primetime situations. Hendrickson was that one, but it was the defense of this team, and you don't play defense with one player. It's a collaborative effort, and Campolindo's defense today was just stifling. Well, folks, that's going to wrap it up from Campolindo High School. I want to invite you to check out our other coverage on CIF North Coast. Dot TV as we will have the boys, actually we have right now the boys Division I lacrosse game taking place, so I invite you to jump over on that game. We'll have more lacrosse for you tomorrow, girls and boys Division II beginning at noon, and then we wrap up the North Coast section season next week from the Oakland Coliseum for the baseball finals, four games for you on June the 2nd. I'd like to thank everyone here on CIFNorthCoast.tv who made today's broadcast possible, including our videographer, Robert Fields. For my broadcast partner and producer, doing double <laughs> duty today, Bo Furtick, I am Jeff Kurtz saying so long from Camp Alindo High School as the Cougars win it three games to none over Doherty Valley. We will see you next time on your home for high school sports in the North Coast section, CIFNorthCoast.tv. Good night, everybody.